Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our Courageous Leadership with Virginia Pradhan. It's Saturday and Wednesday at 10 o'clock Central Time, training you to lead with courage. We are so delighted that you are here. I'm grateful for uh, each one of you sending us your questions. We uh, love your questions. They are so important. Today, I'm going to talk about that your courage is found in Christ and how. The adversity of life or the storms of life will strike us without warning. And going victoriously through adversity requires faith and a call to action, to be strong in Christ. But often we feel weary, tired, or unprepared. Nevertheless, there is hope in Christ. As Christ will give you, will give us strength, his strength, his courage, and Christ will be with you wherever you go. And as you remain faithful in his power, your life will make known your God to the whole world for them to see that you are strong in the strength that God supplies. You are never a victim, but a victor. You have joy and peace in the midst of your uh, adversity. Discouragement in God's power is out of your life. Someone said, I have a fear issue, fear of people to reject me again. She said, I have a trust issue. I was hurt by many. And she admitted, I have a control issue, she said. I need to be in control and not to be rejected or hurt by anyone. I feel like I am the only one who can control us. How do I resolve those issues, she said. I know the Bible asks me and all of us to trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Proverbs 3, 5. She mentioned, here was and here is my advice. When something like fear or trust or controls, control issues is holding you back from living courageously, my first advice is pray, read the Bible, and make a list of verses that will encourage you whenever your faith is weak and your anxiety high. Verses like Psalm 37, 5, commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to to pass. Put them around your house, wherever you are able to see and and memorize them or repeat them when you are in need. One day, to my surprise, I received an encouragement note from that person. She said, I did everything that you said to do. Lately, I experienced an adversity or devastation in my life because of choices that one of my children made. But God gave me courage and lifted me above those devastations. And she repeated to me Isaiah 26, 3 and 4, reminded me that and asked that God will keep you and everyone in perfect peace, those whose mind is stayed on you, on God. Yes, our courage is Christ's gift to, gift to us. I know from my own experience and adversity. As a child, for some of you that you don't know me, I grew up under socialist and communist regime, and I knew nothing but fear and lies and adversities. Our entire world in socialist Romania revolved around our leader, Nicolae Ceausescu. 
during the totalitarian regime of this dictator, Nicolae Ceausescu, the most brutal and repressive regime, even by the, blo the Soviet bloc standards, Romania was a land of lies. The dictator's word was law. Religion was tolerated only to keep up outside appearances and internal dissidence was not permitted. Ceausescu's goal was to demolish many churches to make room of his palace, his eternal earthly temple. He declared himself a god and he decreed that he brought us in Romania the olden era while we were starving to death in a prison land. And every citizen was required to agree with him. If you did not, you would face the full wrath of Ceausescu's secret police, the Securitate, one of the most ambiguous and brutal secret police force in the world. Simply put, Ceausescu transformed my native country, Romania, into a prison land. We were not free to confront him, his lies, or his despotic regime. Anyone who questioned or disagreed with him was considered a traitor, an enemy of the state, and was either thrown in jail, killed, or disappeared, never to be heard from again. The socialist government even had spies in our churches, plant, planted in our church. No place was safe. The best way to avoid trouble was for many to remain silent, question nothing, and try to blend in. Unfortunately, I refused to blend in. I fought as an attorney against the dictator and his regime, and I took him to court to respect the human and religious rights. And I won by God's grace in God's power. But God's grace and in God's power, I'm alive, and dictator Ceausescu is dead. In Christ, I found the strength and the courage to do all of this and more. You can read about my journey uh, of courage and victory in Christ in Socialist Romania and here in the United States, Defending Human and Religious Rights, in my book, Saving My Assassin. You can buy the book by going to virginiaprodanbooks.com slash products slash book. I will sign it for you. As you read my book, I hope you are encouraged to see God's power, how he equipped me, how he gave me courage in Christ. As you read my memoir, I hope you will be encouraged that God not only equipped me and gave me courage, but he gave me victory. He changed me and changed a country, Romania, through me, from socialist to a democratic country. Remember that God wants to do the same things in your life if you allowed him. Christ is the source of courage power and joy in our difficult times or in every single day. So my advice is make your goal to live courageously each day and for God to receive the glory because of your life. Repeat those Bible verses that will encourage you and maybe encourage others. I have been personally through some incredible, discouraging circumstances in my life, but I continually find Bible verses that will encourage me 
and many people around me. I learned that God provides all the courage I need for each adversity, that I can walk in his grace and not in my perfection or in my own strength. That is the secret. I am sharing this with you, that you can find your way out of your fear, lack of trust, control issues that you experience through the hurts of your past. Often, our situation will not change entirely, but by trusting God, you will allow God build his courage in you and you will walk victoriously with Christ. I promise. My second advice is your real life changing point is this. In your adversity, it is good to read the Bible, to memorize Bible verses, but more important than anything else is to run to Christ. Spend time alone with Christ. Here is a great example of a person in her adversity running courageously to Christ. The story is in Mark 5, 24 to 34. The woman who touched Jesus. In her adversity, she entered the crowd. She did not ask for permission to the crowd or anyone else. And reach out and touch Jesus' cloth. Surely not something permissible at that time or in that culture. This woman had made Jesus an absorbent Jew ritually unclean. She totally broke the law, the rules. Everyone around her witnessed this event and she expected Christ to be upset or irritated by what she has done. Maybe you think she thought, oh, I'm caught. I need to hide, to run away, or make some excuses now. Not this woman. Courageously, in front of everyone, she told Christ the truth of her brokenness, loneliness, of all her desperate adversity because she recognized that she was the Savior. And Jesus responded with absolutely love, compassion, respect, and no concern about ritual purity or following the rules. You see Jesus overwhelming her with compassion and healing power. This woman had been rejected for 12 years, and finally she is healed and sought out in front of the crowd by the one who healed her. Christ. Jesus will respond to your adversity with love, respect, and compassion beyond your expectations. It took immense courage for this woman to come forward and admit what she has done or to tell the story, extraordinary bravery to tell her story in front of the crowd and declared in front of everyone what had happened. To be transparent. Hope you see that in this process, this woman's faith in Christ and courage to touch Jesus ended by her being seen, healed, and restored to her relationship with God in Christ and restore to her relationship with community. Christ called her daughter, my child. He said, your faith has made you well. The woman's faith comes from courage tinged with desperation. I have found that we only admit our need for God, or sometimes we need only uh, our need for God when we are desperately. Then we admit that we are humans, we are mortals, limited, that we need Christ in our adversity to see us heal, 
to give us courage and restore us to our relationship with God in Christ and to restore us with our community. We need to rely on God to really see and be seen just as we are broken people and in need of his help. And that can be terrifying. I heard from many people. We are terrified that God or someone else might see our shortcomings. And we spend time, useless time, working or pretending we are fully self-reliant and we can go on on our own, just alone. We will be fine. And then tragedy upon tragedy show up in our life, in our lives. We need time with God to help us to see who we are. Let him heal us, heal our feelings, our struggles, and complete our needs. And to be courageous and be fully transformed by his power. In our times of desperation, we need to know that God understands us, fully understands us, and then be ready to receive his love and acceptance. It is courageous to risk seeing God's perspective of us and being seen. It is not weak. It takes incredible courage, like the bleeding woman. Maybe we think we are too much of a mess to be received. Wrong. Very wrong. Look for God and remember your need for him in your adversity. Master up the courage tinged with desperation to bring that all in your life to Jesus. Your courage in any adversity of your life is found in Christ, in his love, acceptance, restoration, and will extend to your love for people. As human, we let each other down sometimes, but God never fails to receive us with compassion and to give us the power to be restored to community and to be God's love for one another. Be patient. This process is not easy and does not come without paying the price of becoming responsible for living at a higher level with Christ. But I promise you, Once you have realized and accepted that you are called to live a significant and courageous life in Christ, you cannot longer continue to live at a lesser level. If you need any help, individual or group help or corporation help, please contact us at virginiaprodanbooks.com. We are here to help you live courageously and to lead courageously. Until our next Courageous Leadership with Virginia Prodan, every Wednesday and Saturday at 10 o'clock Southern Time, training you to lead with courage, keep in touch, and be blessed. Bye-bye now.